This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 23, The Volume of a Right Prism from Module 3. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students use the known formula for the volume of a right rectangular prism, length times width times height. Students understand the volume of a right prism to be the area of the base times the height. Students compute volumes of right prisms involving fractional values for length. Students use the formula for the volume of a right rectangular prism to answer questions about the capacity of tanks. Students compute volumes of right prisms involving fractional values for length. On page 184 in your book, copy the essential question for lesson 24, what does the capital B stand for in the volume formula? We're starting with example one, measuring liquid in a container in three dimensions. A glass container is in the form of a right rectangular prism. The container is 10 centimeters long, 8 centimeters wide, and 30 centimeters high. The top of the container is open, and the base and the walls of the container are 3 millimeters thick, which is 0.3 centimeters. The water in the container is 6 centimeters from the top of the container. What is the volume of the water in the container? So. Some things that I we'll want you to notice in here is that we are dealing with two different units of measure. They have given us the dimensions of the tank in centimeters, but then they said that the walls of the centimeter are three millimeters thick. So we will need to take that into account as we are computing the capacity here. I want you to notice that the entire tank is not filled. So we will need to pay attention to this dimension, which is 30 centimeters, which is the entire tank, and then understand that it is only filled up to here. And it says that they, the containers of the walls are 3 millimeters, which is 0.3 centimeters thick. So when we use the dimensions of the tank, we are going to have to account for that, and we're going to have to take away 0.3 of a centimeter from this side, 0.3 of a centimeter from the right side. So let's go ahead and calculate the length of the tank. We start with 10 and we take away the 3 tenths from the left and the 3 tenths from the right and that gives us a length of 9.4 centimeters. Next Let's calculate the width of the tank. So the width of the tank, we need to, it starts out being 8, but we need to take away the 0.3 from the left and the right because of the thickness of the walls. So our width starts out as 8, but then we are going to take away the 0.3 on the left and the 0.3 on the right to account for the thickness of the wall. So the width of our container is 7.4 centimeters. We also need to know the height and we want to pay attention to what the question is asking. They're asking about the volume of the water. So we don't need the volume of the entire figure because it is not filled. The height that we're going to use is here on the right side of the tank. And we do need to account for the thickness of the bottom, which is 0.3. So if the entire side here is 30, and we take away the 6 centimeters that is not filled, and then we take away the 0.3 centimeters for the thickness, that will leave us with the length, or rather the height, of the figure. So we go ahead and subtract that, and then our height is 23.7 centimeters is our height. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill, figure the volume of our figure. And I'm just going to redraw it over here and relabel it. So this is the part that just represents the water. And we have a length of 9.4. The width is equal to 7.4. 
and then the height is equal to 23.7. So our formula for volume from your reference sheet is capital BH, where capital B stands for the area of the base. Capital B is the area of the base. In this case, the base of the figure is a rectangle with a length and a width. So we can use that length times width for the area of the base. And then we multiply that times the height to get the entire volume. So the length is 9.4, the height is, or rather the width is 7.4, that's going to give us the area of the base. Then we multiply that by the height of the figure, which is 23.7. And that is going to give us the volume. So again, the capital B stands for the area of the base. And that's the area of the base right here. And then what they're doing when they are asking for the volume is they are actually stacking that base 23 units tall, like that. So we go ahead and calculate our answer. And the length times the width times the height is 1,648.572. Our unit of measure is cubic centimeters. And that is the volume of the water. If you would turn to page 179 now, we'll, we'll continue the lesson. So we're going to do the example, the volume of a right triangular prism. And it says, find the volume of the right triangular prism shown in the diagram using the formula volume equals capital BH. So let's go ahead and write our formula, volume equals capital BH. And we know that the capital B stands for the area of the base. In this case, the base is not the rectangle. The base is the triangle, and that is what is being repeatedly stacked toward the back. So I'm just going to fill that in and show that. So this is actually the base, and to make it three-dimensional, it is being stacked repeatedly to make it taller. Um, if you find that confusing, you can always redraw the picture so that it is uh, standing up and down and rather than on its side. So what that would look like might be like this. I'm going to go ahead and relabel the dimensions as well. So the base of the triangle here is four meters. And I'm going to label that. That is the base of the triangle. The base of the triangle. And then the, this is the height of the prism. I'm going to call that H sub P for the height of the prism. And that six and a half is the height of the prism. And then you notice that there is one more dimension that they've given inside the triangle. And that is actually the height of the triangle base. So let's go ahead and label that. This is the height of the triangle. I'm going to go ahead and draw that in here as well and label it. That is the height of the triangle. So our formula for the area of the base, which is a triangle, is 1 half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. That's the area of the base. Now we want to multiply that times the height of the prism. So the height of the prism, I'm going to call that h sub p, and that's the height of the prism. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute the numbers now. And I want you to make sure that you are very careful when you're working with a triangular pyramid or triangle prism because there are two different heights. You've got the height of the triangle, which is here. And then you've got the height of the prism, which is here. So go ahead and substitute the numbers. We've got 1 half times the base of the triangle, which is 4, times the height of the triangle, which is a half a meter 
times the height of the prism, which is six and a half. Go ahead and calculate your answer. We've got half of four is two, and half of two is two, so that gives us two. And then, whoops, let's correct that. Half of four is two, and half of two is one. So there we've got one for the area of the base times six and a half. So the volume of our figure is six and a half, and the units for volume are cubic, so we've got six and a half cubic meters, and that's meters to the third power. Next we'll be on page 185, and we will be doing example three. For example three, a fuel tank is in the shape of a right rectangular prism and has 27 liters of fuel in it. It is determined that the tank is three quarters full. The inside dimensions of the base of the tank are 90 centimeters by 50 centimeters. What is the height of the fuel in the tank? How deep is the tank? One liter is equal to a thousand centimeters. So the first thing that we might want to do here is to draw a diagram. A fuel tank is in the shape of a right rectangular prism. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that first. And let's see, we've got inside dimensions of the base of the tank. So the base of the tank is a rectangle and it's 90 by 50. So I'm going to go ahead and label that. This is the length of the rectangle, and that's 90, and the width of the rectangle is 50. And I'm noticing that it is not giving me the height. I'm going to go ahead and put H is a question mark right there. So it says, what is the height of the fuel in the tank, and how deep is the tank? So it says that the fuel tank is in the shape of the prism. It has 27 liters of fuel in it. It is determined the tank is three quarters full. So that 27 liters of fuel does not go all, of the, all the way up to the top. So let's say three quarters of this might be up to about here. So let's go ahead and show the fluid or the fuel being that tall. And that represents 27 liters. So if I redraw this, and this just represents the fuel, then the fuel is 90 by 50 by a certain amount. And filled to the top, the volume is 27 liters. So the volume is the area of the base times the height. And the area of the base is a rectangle, so that's length times width times the height, and that represents the volume. And we know that the volume is 27 liters. So notice that we have two different units of measure. We have liters and we have centimeters. So when you are working with a problem, you need to use only one unit of measure. So we're going to go ahead and change those liters to centimeters. It says that there are a thousand centimeters cubed in a liter. So if we want to change liters to centimeters cubed, we would divide by a thousand. So 27, or sorry, we will multiply by a thousand. We're going from a large unit to a small unit, so we multiply. So our volume is 27,000, and that is equal to 90 times 50 times the height. 90 times 50 is 4,500 times the height is 27,000. Solve for H, divide by 4,500. Remember to do the same operation with the same number. And that will get us our height. 27,000 divided by 4,500 is equal to 6. So that makes our height 6, and that's as high as the fuel is. So that's a 6. And right over here, 
on our original drawing, this value right here is a 6. So it says, what is the height of the fuel in the tank? The height of the fuel is 6 centimeters. And then it says, how deep is the tank? Well, the, the depth of the tank goes all the way to the top, and we know that it is 3 quarters full. So 6 is 3 quarters of the length. And we know that mathematically is is the equal sign. And we know that of means to multiply. So 3 quarters times the length. So now we've got an equation that we can solve. We want to divide by 3 fourths. This means to multiply, so we do the opposite operation. We're going to divide by 3 fourths. When you divide by a fraction, you actually multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply both sides by 4 thirds. We can write 6 as a fraction. 3 and 6 have a common factor of 3. Divide by 3 and you get 1 and 2. 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 over 1 is 8. These cancel each other out because a number times its reciprocal is 1, leaving us with the length. So that means that the entire length here, and actually that's called the height, is equal to 8. I'm going to go ahead and change those L's to H's for height. You may want to do that as well. So we had 3 quarters of the height, 3 quarters times the height, and the height is equal to 8. So the height of the tank is 8 centimeters. So we have answered both of our questions. In this lesson, you have learned the volume formula is capital BH, where capital B is the area of the base times the height. A strategy we can use to find the volume of a three-dimensional object is to find the area of the base, called capital B, then multiply times the prism's height, H. You can use the same formula and work backward to solve for a missing dimension, such as height. Be careful when working with triangular prisms, as there are two different heights, the height of the triangle base and the height of the prism.